My name is Eric Reynolds. I'm the associate publisher of Fanographics Books. Um, I'm also the editor of uh, the anthology Now, our new comics anthology that we've been putting out since, I guess, right around this time, 20, late 2016. Um, so a little over four years now. Um, just about to come out with the 10th issue uh, this spring. Um, and um, we have the opportunity just to, to talk about not just now, but anthologies in general. Um, I've invited uh, four cartoonists to join us. Um, we have MS Harkness, um, who just this year during the pandemic released her new graphic novel, Desperate Pleasures uh, from Uncivilized Books. Um, we have Raquel Jack, um, cartoonist from San Diego, who uh, was the author of the fantastic story, Misguided Love in now number nine. Um, maybe my favorite thing that, that has been published in now to date. Um, so I'm real happy to talk to her for the first time. Uh, Nick Thorburn, who is the most constant part of now since its inception, doing um, I think all but one back cover and one long story in, I forget which issue it was. Um, you too. <clears throat> <laughs> um, Nick is also a great musician, um, great writer, um, really happy to have him here. And then we have the esteemed Noah Van Skyver, um, who is the probably the, the anthology veteran in this panel. I think Noah has been in virtually every comics anthology that's come out over the past decade or so, so at least of any that are worth their salt. Um, so happy to have you, Noah. Um, the first question I wanted to ask basically all of you, the reason I, I was interested in talking to all of you is that uh, you've all worked in anthologies, I think for kind of different reasons. Um, you know, Nick has, you know, many other creative pursuits in music. He, he probably doesn't have the time to be a full-time cartoonist, um, even if he wanted to. Um, Noah's got plenty of graphic novels that he's always working on, uh, at least one or two at a time, it seems like. Um, Raquel, you, you dabble in a number of different media. MS, you just put out a book, um, you know, yet, yet you're also going to be in the new, the new now that comes out, um, kind of hot on the heels of Desperate Pleasures. So I wanted to ask you, like, what, what do you see, um, how do you see anthologies as providing a kind of avenue of expression for you. So let me start with Noah, because I think you've been in the most, Noah. So I'm curious as to like, you know, why, why do you still want to be in anthologies? Why is it just, well, you, you go. Well, uh, for one thing, it's a good way of keeping your name out there to make sure that, um, I mean, like short stories kind of help sell the bigger work that you have. Uh, but short stories are also their own art form, so not everything and not every story is big enough to be a book. So I don't know, anthologies are good for just placing those smaller um, things that you have to say. So you have, a, you have a genuine interest in doing short stories, whether there's a natural home for them or not. Yeah, definitely. Cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> MS, let me ask you about your story in now number 10. I, I, one of the things I really love about it is it's, um, one of the best and first stories I'd seen that was actually, at least in part, about the pandemic. Um, so I was wondering what kind of motivated that, and and if you you know knew where where you were going to publish it when you started, or or, or what. For sure, um, I actually made that pretty much right after I finished my book. And usually, when I'm working on a long term project, I am so exhausted of like running the marathon that is a book. And you feel insane doing something that long just by yourself, like without anyone else's input. So I love working in anthologies because it's like quick release of a cool story. Um, I didn't want to make a gimmicky kind of like, whoa, is the world COVID comic, even though it is obviously awful. Um, but I really just wanted to tell the story of like just that weird uh, transition period almost between like knowing that like there's disease all around you, but like we didn't have any kind of uh, shelter in place order. We didn't have any, you know, real, you know, 
<laughs> the government certainly wasn't doing anything for us. Um, so it was a very good last hurrah in that I was telling the story of coming to Columbus, Ohio for the then canceled Arnold Expo. Um, and it really was this very fun moment we got to have before we were all, you know, essentially at home for the rest of the year. So yeah, it seemed like it was like right on the cusp of really everything getting shut down where the pandemic was influencing what was happening, but you were still able to, to have, have some fun, I guess. And then I got fired from the gym. So I had the time to make it just like right away. So it was great. <laughs> what about you, Nick? What, tell me about your you know, current relationship with publishing comics and in now and otherwise? Well, <clears throat> we're, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm on a bit of a, a break from, from publishing comics. I, I, I do want to, again, um, I love anthologies as a fan. I, I kind of approach comics, you know, as a fan, that's how I, I just grew up with comics and, and, um, and, well, obviously, I'm sure everybody did, but um, obviously, I, I'm partial to to anthologies because that's how I met you uh, through Moam, the first round of of uh, the first version of, of of the anthology. But um, yeah, I always loved going into like comic book stores and um, like getting the Kramer Zergot and stuff on tour and having like just having like a big book on tour to just to look through and discover all the new. Um, up and coming cartoonists and stuff was always so exciting. So I'm, I'm really, I love anthologies and I love being a part of it. And like Noah said, the short story is sometimes a really good format. I love a short story, like get in and get out and tell a clean story. And um, yeah, I don't know. Well, that was, that was basically like probably my number one motivation with now is just to have a platform for short stories because I think they're so they're such a rich part of, of comics and they're a great way to, to kind of find your voice and yeah just, and just yeah. say things that don't necessarily need to be a fucking graphic novel you know? mm -hmm. um and to put on new new people too like you said like to yeah this new artists yeah that's um, where i discovered a lot of new artists is from now I, that's that's how i found out who um es glenn was who's now like blowing up you know he's, he's becoming such a big cartoonist and i discovered his work in now. So um, now serves like an important role in that way. Yeah, never it's a great example of a cartoonist. I think he's really benefited from experimenting with shorter pieces rather than mm -hmm. maybe just diving into a long book just for the sake of it, which unfortunately I think sometimes it seems to be, you know, just the norm. Yeah. Raquel, um, tell me about m misguided love. Specifically, I, I wanted to, you know, kind of hear how the story formed if you really knew I mean it is it is a uh, it's I think the longest story of Ren and now it's about 40 pages and um, I just wondered if you kind of knew what it what you were really getting into when you started it what you know what yeah um yeah uh Miss Guy in Love is the longest story that I've done I usually do like little vignettes but um yeah, Misguided Love was really fun because um, I could explore these like big ideas and like put it across multiple pages. And um, I didn't really, well, yeah, I did like plan it out because I knew like exactly what I wanted to say and everything because I've had all these things that I wanted to say, but it needs to be like put in a, like a long sequence um, rather than just like a big net. And so, um, yeah, I planned it out and I, uh, I just, I made sure that like, I wanted to hit these like specific memories that like have been like burning inside of me to like, uh, and just like get them out on paper. So yeah. can I ask a little bit about that story? How, how did you do that? Was that done put together on a computer or was that all on one page, like with paint and then pens and all that stuff? I wondered about the medium that you used. I, it's like all like a, these are the pages and they're all like I cut out like a 41 different pages from like big paper and then like I gessoed each page um, with oh, the wow. and then when once I had that like stack of like gessoed paper that's whenever I like started working on it so I could just like go one after another and like get it 
like go and do the gesso process all over again. It's amazing work, by the way. I love that. Your artwork's great. Thanks. Yeah, it's a remarkable story. It's it's probably my my favorite short story of the. I mean, it's hard to say it's even short. It's uh, it's medium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, yeah, it could it's, be it could know, be like a European album. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like that many. Um, another thing I'm curious to just hear your opinions about um, is what to you what's the value of having the work actually in print versus just putting it online. Um, I personally, you know, think there's a value to both, but I and uh, you know, and I'm very partial to print. And I think there is a real value to it, um, but I'm just curious what your relationship with it is. If you, if Raquel, your work is, you know, is, is like Noah was saying, it's um, there's kind of a lot of different media you're using on each page, um, that it works as kind of fine art on its own as a as a as a as a unit, um, but it, you're also reproducing it for print. Are you thinking about that when you're making it, or are you just just going for it or yeah definitely because um i kind of have a tendency to get like really 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 small and so um i made sure to like cut the pages the exact dimensions of the book so i wouldn't so i couldn't like physically get any smaller so that like you couldn't read it once it's printed does that make sense hmm. um, mm -hmm. because like things shrink down and everything whenever you work big and uh yeah i feel like there's like there's good stuff with um, like uh, showing your art digitally because like I do, I like upload the whole piece and then I upload like zoomed images and stuff. Details, and yeah. I see it bigger than it is, but I feel like a lot of my stuff is pretty intimate and the cool thing about a book is you can just like curl up with it and just like uh, get into it and read all the little things and I don't know, like a book is like an like an inherently like intimate object. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. What about you, Noah? Because you, you, all of you have, you know, how I think of. Well, I'm old school, so I, I mean, I make my work for print. That it's not finished until it's printed. You know, that's just the way I think about it. I would be, I would. But feel you like do I, put work online. Yeah, but it's even if I put it online, my intention is to someday have it collected and printed somewhere mm -hmm. and then you know that's that's when it's like actually done so what about the uh, either of the other two of you M? I would definitely agree with Noah um I'm I'm here with print until the wheels fall off and that like <laughs> uh you, you can't with all due respect to web comics it's like there's too much uh, uh too much of a distraction of having it on a phone or a computer and that you can just immediately toggle to something else and if you're gonna pick my book up or if you're gonna read my work I want I want you to read it and like be emotionally involved with it and not just feel like you have the liberty to be amused by something else so hmm. yeah website yeah. is like inherently like fast too you know like you like you were saying sorry yeah no what about you, Nick? Um, yeah, web comics suck. I I, I don't get this <laughs> question from web comics. It's like the stuff that's on Instagram that has like a hundred thousand followers. It's like stick figures. It's garbage, um, and people love it, which um, you know it's disconcerting. But uh, yeah, print always. I, I think it just feels like the real thing. The the it's an incubation form when it's online, and then when it it's printed it's like out in the world living um until the paper <clears throat> you know decomposes well it's in interesting i've just been working on a book simon hanselman's collection of his crisis zone comic oh, yeah. i don't know if all of you that's are familiar with that yeah yeah and that's a really fascinating example of in the moment um you know it, it's it's been having it on the web has been a fantastic thing um i think it's like really worked in that format in a way that you know maybe i wouldn't say a lot of the web comics like nick's talking about do um, definitely but i feel like i i follow simon and i was dropping in on that but like i instagram is designed for it's like ephemera ephemera just like scroll 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 
I couldn't like sit with that. I, I'm and I'm glad that it's being published because my intention is to sit with it when it mm -hmm. is in print and read it. Because well, that's what I was gonna say is that it's like they. Um, I do think in this case, like they kind of complement each other. You know, having the mm. the two the two options in a way that um, kind of pushes back on my own maybe natural inclination to to want to to dismiss the web comics in some way. I like that. Because I'm a crotchety old comics. <laughs> well, doesn't Simon I, hate web comics too? Like <laughs> Yeah, probably. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean web comics can mean so many different things. It's you know I'm really right. trying to, to narrow it down too much. But um, <laughs> but yeah I mean I feel like with now I I hadn't done an anthology in about five or six years and I felt like looking back at Moam, the anthology I did before that, there was a real value to having this work permanently in print. There's like a, you know, there is a permanence to print that the internet, I think, will always struggle um, in competition with because the, the internet's too vast, you know. But um, so what we have, we probably only have a few more minutes. I'd like to know what you guys are all working on now. Um, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> Let's, uh, Noah, what are you working on? That stack of pages right there, if you can see it. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm working on a graphic novel that's about uh, Joseph Smith and the founding of the Mormon church. So I'm- You've been working on that for a long time. Yeah, but I'm on the last chapter, like this stuff right here, this is the end, this is the last part of the book and then it's done. So I'm getting ready yeah. to finish it up uh, by, I have to turn it in March 1st. So then I'm on to other things after that. Congratulations. How many years have you been working on it? How many years? Yeah. Uh, four years. Yeah. Is it biographical or is it fictionalized? It's biographical. Cool. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I can't when wait. Is to it coming on. out? Um, the spring of uh, 2022. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. What about you, Raquel? What are you up to these days in the um, pandemic? Well, uh, I've been a little blocked, but um, I think I'm like emerging out of that cocoon and I'll hopefully like make something longer, even longer than this guy to love at some point. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to like weave all the little stories together to make one big one. Because I have like this whole list of things I want to talk about, but it's hard to figure out how those things should go together. Were you happy with how Misguided Love was received? Did you feel like you got, you know, a lot of good response to it? I mean, sometimes it feels like you're just, you know, staring into the void, you know? Yeah, I, uh, I, I have been happy with the like reception uh, from people. Um, I get like emails sometimes about like people saying how it like moved to them and stuff, and mm -hmm. it's really fulfilling. At first, I wasn't like really sure what I was like. I, I wasn't sure if like I was onto something, but then like people started complimenting me and stuff, and so That's yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. What about you, Em? Working on the third book, um, drilling away at that. I'm like almost 50 pages in. And then um, something that's coming out um, in the near future here is my friend, Sean Knickerbocker has an anthology himself um, called Rust Belt Review. And I've got a little bit in that. So bunch of anthologies, a um, bunch of anthology pieces this year I've got just kind of on the back burner that I'm excited to show everybody, so. Awesome. And how about you, Nick? Um, <clears throat> on the comic side, I'm kind of in the percolating stage or gestational and I'm, I'm sort of um trying to figure out the next longer piece uh that I want to do and I have some ideas and it's just I've just been kind of wrestling with that and trying to um with my limitations in drawing like see what what kind of works I, whether it's really narrative or, or another abstract thing but I've been doing other kinds of writing and and I have an album coming out in um in in late spring so so did, um did the pandemic really affect you know the 
creative path you took last year? Like, did you have to cancel projects, find other projects or? I definitely drank more wine. Uh, <laughs> that was a big, a big uptick. But uh, yeah, I think I would have, I think the record that I'd been working on might've come out in the fall and um, there might've been um, obviously touring, there would have been touring and that kind of thing. So I'm just getting back into music too. I took a long hiatus, so I'm kind of climbing back into that seat as well. But yeah, just trying to, yeah, the pandemic was, you know, it, or is, um, it's definitely put everything in, in jelly. Everything's moving a little more, more slowly. So I'm just trying to take advantage of that, I guess. Well, it's. I've talked to so many cartoonists who've said that, you know, basically being a cartoonist is like training for a lockdown. Totally. But Raquel, you mentioned, you know, that you had a creative block, like, was it pandemic related? Was it, I mean, not, I, and it's none of my business, but I'm mostly curious from a pandemic perspective, how that's affected your, you know, how you, your creative year would have, would have gone or did go. Um, a little bit, uh, like, I feel like whenever I get right, right down to it, it's, I have these things that I want to talk about, but I feel like, like, uh, I, I'll, I'll destroy a relationship if I do make art about it. And so I've just sort of been like, like, is it selfish to make art that's about this person or, and so I've just sort of been in this like, uh, 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 you know what I mean? Um, and so. Well, that's yeah. a great question. Noah and um, you guys, I think probably both have experience on that front and some doing autobiographical comics. How do you wrestle with that? Go ahead, Em. Don't be a dick. I don't know. <laughs> the number one rule. Uh, Great rule. Good. Be respectful. Be kind. Be responsible. Be an unreliable narrator and let everyone know you're an unreliable narrator. That, yeah. So do the opposite of Chester Brown then. So. <laughs> Uh, I was trying to think of a Joe Matt joke in there, but oh yeah, that's probably <laughs> or just go hard in the paint, you know. If you want to go that direction, just just let everyone know. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Noah? Uh, I feel a little guilty about that stuff, you know. Um, I don't know who said there was a quote that was like, "If you didn't want to be in my story, you should have behaved better." No, <laughs> that one, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I feel guilty, but I've, I've definitely thrown my family under the bus more than a few times. <laughs> more than a few times. So you feel guilty about it, but then you keep doing it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta move units somehow. That's right. Um, well, I think that's probably about uh, the end of our time. I'm really happy you guys could, could do this and I appreciate your time. Um, yeah, thank you. I really yeah, enjoy you. it. I, and thank you for contributing to now. You know, it's a, it's, it really is kind of a labor of love. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for, for all your contributions to it. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. Cool. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye.